You know, first I want to say uh, congratulations to everybody up here. Um, you know, I'm truly honored to be receiving this accomplishment with all of you. Uh, as Mr. Beeman said, uh, you guys are the greatest. Uh, and I feel like, you know, just to be able to share the stage with you is a dream come true for me. Um, to be sitting between Chris Bosch and Tony Parker is like a dream come true. So uh, that, that's that. But for me, with this, all the glory goes to God. Um, having grown up in a family uh, that emphasized faith, I understand where all the great things that have ever come in my life uh, or happened in my life, I know where they come from. To me, it's always been about the people. So God has blessed me with so many different people along this journey that have helped me get to where I am today. All my coaches at every level, starting with Jack Welch, Copper's Cove Bulldogs, to Coach R. Browse, who convinced me. <laughs> Coach Robert Browse is the one who convinced me to come to Baylor to do something that had never been done before so that we'd be remembered forever. And I think we accomplished that. I want to say thank you to the Washington Commanders, or the Redskins, whichever one you want to call them, for drafting me in 2012 and allowing a, a childhood dream to come true. And also thank you to the Cleveland Browns and the Baltimore Ravens. But when we talk about the people, it's the names of Sean Doherty, Sean Robertson, Anthony Mackey, Jerry Hill, William Mallow, Nathan Kepler, Cam Coffell, Jason Smith, Dan Gay, Danny Watkins, Ivory Wade, Philip Blake, Cyril Richardson, Jake Jackson, Stefan Huber, and Robert Griffin. They mean something to me. Yes, I had an offensive lineman in college named Robert Griffin. He played right guard. We called him Big Griff, but he was forbidden from calling me Little Griff. <laughs> But all those names, those are all the names of all my high school and college offensive linemen. The big fellas always protected me, even though they never really got the shine of a Heisman Trophy winner. But every step of my journey, there has been someone that God placed, or should I say in every step of every one of our journeys, there's been someone that God placed in our lives to help us get to where we were going. It's always been about the people for me. So I'm grateful for the unconditional love that I receive from my niece, Hope, and my nephew, Baylor. I'm grateful for my agent, Mark Lepselter. You guys might not know this, but he, he was on me for years to get into broadcasting. And now, because of him, the future is limitless when it comes to TV. Thank you, brother. I'm grateful for being welcomed with open arms to my wife's family and the fact that they traveled overseas all the way from Estonia just to be here today. Thank you. And in case y'all don't know where Estonia is, <laughs> it's over near Russia. And it's part of the reason why we're all wearing the Ukrainian flags because we care about those people over there. I also have a table here with people, Auntie Joni, Auntie Elise, Auntie Vital. I remember you guys were always there for me and my two sisters and my mom and my dad. So much so that we call you guys Auntie, but you're not family by blood but you're still family. Thank you. I remember how the people in Coppers Cove, Texas, they would fill the stands for every single game and give a meaning to what we know in Texas of Friday Night Lights. I remember the reaction videos after Baylor won its first Heisman because we were all so excited that they could no longer act like we didn't exist. I also remember lifelong Cowboy fans, sorry Mike, <laughs> cheering on 
their arch rivals in Washington, right? The Washington Redskins, their arch rivals cheering them on as we beat them on Thanksgiving in Jerry's world and later that year to win the division. I remember that because to those people, it didn't matter who the team was. All that mattered was who the quarterback was. And to me, that's a microcosm of what Texas is. It's bigger than the team. It's about the people. I remember when my sisters, Dejan and Jahan, they found out I was being bullied at the park one time in Olympia, Washington. And I came home, I was crying. Something got in my eye, of course. And they grabbed me by the shirt and they walked me right back to that park and they made me stand up for myself. I remember that. They had my back. Thank you. Whew. Sorry. I remember when my mom, she took the time and she sat at every basketball practice every track practice, every football practice, and she filmed every single rep that I took just so my dad, while he was over in Iraq fighting the war, could watch those tapes and give me coaching points. Thank you. I remember my dad, I was 11 years old. We had been killing it all year, right? Track and field. We go to the Junior Olympics. I'm gonna set the world record, or American record, whatever, in the 80 meter hurdles. It was my destiny. Well, I fell over the first hurdle. I got back up though, and I finished second. <laughs> Needless to say, I didn't break the record. And I was crying. I was a mess. And I, when I went to go see my dad, I thought he was going to be mad at me because I didn't accomplish the goal. But when I saw him, all he did was give me a hug and tell me it was OK. He knew in that moment I didn't need a coach. I needed a father. Thank you. I remember coming home, like all of us do. You have a bad day at work, right? And my three daughters, Reese, Gloria, and Gamea, running up to me saying, Daddy, Daddy, I don't know about you, but that makes all your worries vanish in an instant. Thank you. You know, I feel like my life's been like a movie. Some people like movies, right? You know, you like movies about love, you like movies about friends, the good old fashioned, good guy versus the bad guy, right? But let me tell you about my favorite movie of them all. Before I saw this movie, whew, my life had hit a wall. When it came to love, I had, you know, kind of felt like I had forgotten how to crawl. So many people have made sacrifices for me over the, the years but only one has restored my faith in life and love. It's my wife, Greta. She is my favorite movie of them all. My wife was at a breaking point. She took my heart and pieced it back together. She loved me right. She gave me all of her. She was there shooting with me in the gym, literally when the outside world had given up on me. She was out there in over 100 degree weather watching me throw footballs at palm trees. While I also, I would go out there to track and I'd run 400 meter hurdle buildups, which I don't know if there's any track heads in here. I know Coach Hart knows exactly what I'm talking about. It's not fun. And I'd be laid out on the track. She'd laugh. What are you doing this for? And I told her I was doing it for her because she's the best person that I know. 
And without her, I don't even know if I'd be standing up here before you guys today. Because I've never told you this before, baby, but you saved my life. Thank you. You see, over the course of a very short 32 years of my life, I've learned that it's not about the moments that everyone sees that lead to the highlight reels. It's about what people don't see that gets you there. God places everybody in our lives for a reason, and I'm thankful that he's blessed me with all of you. God bless.